Okay guys, I'm gonna keep this one short and sweet because I really don't have a lot to say about Iron Man 2. But let's get to it. Iron Man 1 was one of the best movies of 2008 and a really nice surprise, especially when you consider that it basically brought Robert Downey Jr.'s career back from the dead. So, of course, there's going to be a lot riding on Iron Man 2. And from the trailers, it looked really promising. You know, you got Mickey Rourke as the bad guy. You got Sam Rockwell in it. Don Cheadle's playing War Machine and Scarlett Johansson's in it now. That's some pretty you know, heavy hitters, so this is all good stuff, and I was excited about it, as I'm sure the rest of the world was too, but could it top the original? Well, now it's out, and unfortunately, the answer is no, that it could not. Wait, wait, before you hit the stop button in anger, let me explain. It was still good. It was still good. So why isn't it as good as the first one? Let's break it down. What does work in this movie? First off, Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark is, as in the first one, amazing in the role. I think he's found his signature role here, although I'm not sure if it should count because I'm still not completely convinced that he's acting. I think he just wandered on set, started talking, and they pushed the record button. Wasn't that how Ozzy Osbourne got started? I'm so free singer! Tony Stark in Iron Man 2 is faced with a bit of humility because the metal that powers his life support system is killing him slowly and the Iron Man suit accelerates it. So, Tony is forced to stare mortality in the face, which at first makes him reckless and then makes him more of a philanthropist. Of course, through the whole ordeal, he's still the awesomely funny, brash, outspoken Tony Stark. So, what else works? The action that's in it is... Good. It's well filmed and exciting. What else? The new cast members, Don Cheeto and Scarlett Johansson, do a great job and they fit right in. Especially Scarlett Johansson. She fits right into that leather outfit role. <sighs> Oh, movie, right. So all of this is good, but there are a couple things that drag the movie down, most notably the lack of action. Now, the action that is in it is good, but man, does it take a while to get there. And I know action doesn't make the movie, but come on, it's Iron Man. Blow uh -huh. shit up. Also dragging the movie down a little bit is Mickey Rourke as the villain. Now, Mickey does a great job because he's a great actor, but the problem is that his character's just not that interesting. I mean, we don't know anything about him. He's just an evil Russian. I guess that's all you need. We are Russian. We are evil. This is how it works. Another cast member who does a good job but still falls a little short is Sam Rockwell. Again, we barely know anything about his character, but apparently he's one of Tony Stark's arch rivals. And Sam Rockwell does a good job in the role, just like Mickey Rourke does, but the problem is that you just wish the guy would shut up. He's, he's Joe Pesci in Lethal Weapon. He's Brad Pitt in Burn After Reading. He's Chris Tucker in, well, any movie that he's ever done. So, you know, you get me? He's annoying. But in the end, what really hurts the movie the most is just the fact that you feel like there's not much that's been accomplished. I mean, stuff happens, and Tony is a different and presumably better person by the end, but it just feels like it was an unneeded story that didn't live up to its potential because, you know, what does a good sequel do? It takes the original story and expands upon it and adds to it, like uh, Aliens, Rocky II, Terminator II, The Wrath of Khan, The Empire Strikes Back, Dark Knight. These movies took what was there and expanded on it, added to it and not a lot was added to Iron Man 2. Does that mean it sucked? Oh god, no. It was fun, but I can't call it a great sequel. So, quick recap with the three and three. Three reasons that you should see it, three reasons that you shouldn't. We'll start with the bad. Number three reason not to see it, 
The villains aren't fleshed out enough. Even though the actors do do a good job, we never really know enough about them to care. Number two reason not to see it. Not enough action. Not nearly enough action. Way too much Tony trying to figure out how not to die. Good story, perhaps, but not exciting. And the number one reason not to see it, it leaves you feeling a bit unsatisfied because you wanted it to kick as much butt as the first one. But it didn't. But why should you see it? Number three reason to see it, the new cast members are really good. Nice addition to the series. Especially Scarlet. Think I'm in love. Number two reason to see it, the action that's in it is quite good. It just takes its sweet time getting there. And the number one reason to see it, it's freaking Iron Man! And to wrap things up, my own personal rating out of 10 with a 5 being average, I give Iron Man 2 a 7. Worth seeing, but a bit of a disappointment considering that I gave Iron Man 1 a 9. But if you need a summer blockbuster, this is a safe bet. Check it out. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Take a long ride on the